breaking nuclear news. Let's dive right in. First up, price action. URNF Sprott Uranium Miners ETF was up 4.8% on the week. The S&P 500 broader stock market index was down 2.52% on the week. Uranium continuing to prove itself to be a strong store of value in place to park your capital in this deeply weak and crumbling macroeconomic environment. And because uranium cannot escape exposure to the macroeconomic devastation happening all around us, we will put out a video explaining what is going on and prove it through a lot of different charts and data. But for now, let's dive through the news. We have a summary from Uranium Energy Corps' CEO, Amir Adnani, highlighting the math behind the supply crunch of uranium and why, as a commodity investor, it should excite people who believe in supply-demand dynamics. The bull case is fairly simple. Adnani contends throughout an interview that there are 200 million pounds of annual demand. This is higher than what had been previously noted at 180 million pounds. The CEO of Sprott has previously stated 180 million pounds. Well, the UEC CEO is saying 200 million pounds, probably somewhere in that range. Moreover, Adnani states that there are today approximately 450 operable uranium reactors around the world, while China is looking to increase its nuclear reactors by 150 over the next 15 years. Think about that. That's going to see demand increasing from 200 million pounds per year to 250 million pounds per year. That's a huge increase. While on the supply side, there are around 130 million pounds coming onto the market by the 440 production facilities across the world, even without any further growth in the uranium market. Anyone can understand that there's a deficit between demand and supply. So for now, uranium investors just get to play the waiting game and ride it out, stay on top of the news to understand where this industry is going. So let's dive right into the news. U.S. redoubles efforts to end dependence on Russian nuclear fuel. So we know the West is essentially at war with Russia. And we also know Russia is one of the biggest uranium enrichers in the entire world. And we know that we're also desperately linked to Russia. That's why we haven't cut them off. We've cut them off from everything else except for uranium because we're that desperate for Russian uranium. So here's a chart showing biggest uranium producers. You do have Russia up there. But again, Russia dominates in the enrichment space of uranium. But you also have Kazakhstan, which is the big prize that is why the Chinese leader Xi went to visit Kazakhstan to shore up a steady supply of uranium for its massive nuclear rollout. Would it surprise me if Russia and China start to pressure their neighbor Kazakhstan into not working with the U.S.? Not at all. We'll see where this global polarization goes between East and West. But you can see how important Kazakhstan is. You can also see how desperately pathetic the United States is in terms of production of uranium, which is why we do go back to this headline, U.S. redoubles efforts to end dependence on Russian nuclear fuel. Energy Secretary predicts bipartisan congressional support. Granholm says uranium fuel cycle needed for independence. Absolutely. And this is truly the biggest story in the uranium space right now. Granholm, rather than taking direct ownership, the government will support demand, thereby ensuring manufacturers have sufficient incentives to produce using the market to make sure this capability gets out. We would contract with facilities. They are buying, pumping, stimulating, and supporting this market. And whenever the government gets involved, prices go up because they have an unlimited supply of money and they're just dumping it into this space. In a nutshell, plan is for U.S. to buy enriched uranium in order to expand domestic nuclear fuel industry to replace Russian supply, contracting with U.S. facilities for enrichment and conversion, and driving demand for mined U-308. Goal is to be independent as soon as possible. How does that happen? How do you all envision that happening without the price of uranium and the miners who are going to benefit from this influx of cash going up massively in price. That is why uranium is proving to be a strong store of value compared to almost every other asset class in this macroeconomic environment. Now that's short-term bullish. There's also long-term bullish fundamentals as technology innovation continues to produce new ways of growing and proliferating nuclear energy all around the world. We believe our collective climate and energy security will grow alongside innovation and expansion in nuclear energy. That's why the president has invested billions of dollars through the Department of Energy to ramp up development and demonstration of next-gen reactors 
small modular reactors are going to be spread around the world and in space because it's revolutionary to have readily accessible baseload power pretty much built wherever you want, easily and cheaply. U.S. Air Force is going nuclear as request for proposal released today for a micro reactor to provide available carbon free grid independent power for Alaska's Eelson Air Force Base, critical to national security infrastructure. It's critical to practically everything to have a sustainable power source nearby. It doesn't get bigger than this. And the use cases are absolutely mind blowing. New 2022 edition of IAEA advances in small modular reactor technology shows increase from 70 to 83 nuclear SMRs being developed in 18 countries for, this is important, carbon free electricity, desalination, shipping, hydrogen, and process heat. Think about how absolutely revolutionary it would be to have unlimited drinking water because nuclear power, what can humans accomplish? Practically anything. Energy is everything. And just imagine getting it at a reasonable price forever. It's huge. It's, at this stage, nuclear power could fund in the industrial revolution 4.0 and 5.0. Terrestrial Energy's IMSR co-generation plan offers a scalable, cost-competitive way to repower coal facilities with, with the carbon-free energy. Of course, we're in the early stages of the adoption of nuclear power via SMR technology. Now, this headline excited me so much because it just proves how much money is going to be dumped into this space, the wall of money that's incoming. Ontario Power Generation enters agreement to sell clean energy credits to Microsoft. So now nuclear power is seen as green enough to serve as a carbon offset Talk about a use case for uranium, especially when governments are funding and requiring people to do these carbon offsets. This is the wall of money. Microsoft will buy clean energy credits from Ontario Power Generation hydroelectric dams and nuclear reactors. The two companies will announce Monday just buying energy production from these nuclear power plants and calling it green. Mind-blowing. Though details of how many credits Microsoft will purchase or how much it will pay were not disclosed, the 10-year agreement represents the first marquee customer for OPG's clean energy credit trading business. It could also represent a milestone in efforts to establish a market for clean energy credits in Ontario. Absolutely. This is seriously significant and will just add to the buying pressure on the uranium fuel source required to generate these clean carbon credits. Absolutely massive. Now, because of the revolutionary nature of this fuel source, because we are still in the early stages of humanity's mass adoption of nuclear power, we get to cover the unfolding nuclear renaissance that's happening before our very eyes. Pension fund reforms will help to unleash wave of investment in nuclear energy, according to senior industry sources. The chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, announced a plan on Friday to unlock billions of pounds of cash that could be poured into major infrastructure programs and innovative businesses. The government is scrambling to get energy projects off the ground following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. This is happening in the UK. And so the government is rolling out the red carpet for big pension funds and other financial firms to pour money into nuclear energy generation. Does not get more bullish than that. But again, that's just one country. Uranium stocks rise as German minister sees nuclear power plant extension increasingly likely. At this stage, it doesn't seem like there's such thing as a true power plant shutdown because they're all making U-turns and they're all just being turned right back on because they're absolutely crucial. We covered last week how Belgium was moving forward with shutting down a nuclear plant. Well, in response to that, concerned Belgians sue state over nuclear plant shutdowns. Comes after four Dole 3 reactor in operation in Belgium for 40 years was shut down last week under denuclearization law. And so we'll see how this plays out. But if, if history is any sort of gauge, these will not be shut down. Because all around the world, nuclear power plants are not being shut down. Australian Senator Matt Canavan to introduce legislation to remove the ban on nuclear energy. They, they were banning nuclear energy and now they're doing a complete reversal. Today, I will introduce legislation to remove the ban on nuclear energy. With nine senators co-sponsoring the bill, it is the largest parliamentary support for removing the ban ever. It is time to join the rest of the world and treat nuclear energy as a safe and effective 
option. Ontario trying to delay shutdown of Pickering Nuclear Station amid electricity supply crunch. Surprise, surprise, everyone needs nuclear power. Now let's focus on the long-term vision. I love focusing on the revolutionary nature of this emerging technology. Moon base may be powered by uranium balls. Of course, why wouldn't you ship SMRs to space? Why wouldn't they be in spacecraft? Nuclear power will, in my opinion, be the main reason why space exploration gets off the ground and would become a multi-planetary species. We will stay on top of this market.